morning, good morning. It is your boy Jay Goble back at it again for Not Many Noble, reading the Bible through in 22 with you. It is July 29th, that big 2-9. Number 210, 210 days. We've been reading the Bible together, so thank you. 155 days left. It's rain day today. Yeah, how about that rain day? National Lasagna Day. National Chicken Wing Day. National Talk in an Elevator Day. I'm surprised that some people really don't like that. Some people dislike talking to strangers, especially in the elevator. Like, hey, just you mind your business over there. I'll mind my business over here. I don't, I, I'm, I'm normally a, it's National Talk in an Elevator Day every day that I get in an elevator. That's the way I look at it. That's me. But I didn't know there was a thing. I didn't know it was a thing. And then lastly, International Tiger Day. Rawr. Tiger Day. How about that? Because uh, it is the year of the tiger. You know, when you look at the, <laughs> I, can't, I can't even remember what it is now, the lunar calendar of years. The lunar calendar. Yeah, it's the year of the tiger. I know that. You know that. We knew that. But today is International Tiger Day. So it's like a tiger on tiger, like a stripes on stripes, like a rawr. I guess it's the day to unleash that inner tiger. It reminds me, but it always reminds me of Tony the Tiger right there. Great. With frosted flakes. Yeah, I know. Probably shouldn't, but that's what it does. Well, we're back reading in a bunch of different places. And so I was supposed to read in 11 different places, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I chopped it down to five. So we're going to read Second Kings 21, and then we're going to read Second Chronicles 33. And then we're going to read Second Kings 22, two verses, and Second Chronicles 34, seven verses. And then we're going to read Jeremiah, and then tomorrow, and the next day after that, I think we're starting in Jeremiah again. Because remember, we're reading the Bible through in chronological order from the beginning until now. And we are kind of at that point in Israel's history where they they have been, or Israel is split. Uh, there's there's Judah and Israel, and we've seen the Assyrian captivity, and I believe now we're approaching the Babylonian captivity. So there's, but we're reading it. We're trying to read it through. And the interesting thing is that now in Second Kings, right? Because you start from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, and we're finishing up Second Kings here shortly. Or I don't know about it today, but you know we're, we're getting there. And then First and Second Chronicles, right? So we sprinkled the Kings and the Chronicles where they fit in, but we also sprinkled in the Psalms where they fit in, and the Proverbs where they fit in, and Isaiah. We read Isaiah, but Isaiah doesn't come along if you, your regular layout of your Bible until much later, and Jeremiah now as well. And so it, it gives me. I like it. It gives you a little bit of a better view overall kind of historic historical view of what what when did these things happen when did this take place what's going on and because sometimes it's confusing at least for me but I'm not a bible scholar but I find it confusing to hear to read the same thing a couple different times you know in three different places and not understand that oh that's the same time period I just didn't get it so I broke down these ones into larger, more manageable, because they wanted me to like take three, four different breaks in Second Kings and go back and forth to Second Chronicles. So I'm just putting it all together, reading a long, longer portion, and hoping that you can follow along, which I know you can. So let's jump into Second Kings 21. Manasseh reigned jointly with his father Hezekiah. This is a note. Uh, from 697 BC to 687 BC, this period of co-regency is included in the calculation of 55 years for the length of his reign. Okay, perfect. So Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign, uh, chapter 21, verse 1, and he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Hephzibah. He did that which was evil in Yahweh's sight after the abominations of the nations whom Yahweh cast out before the children of Israel. How about that? Come on. What are you doing? Right? It's like, no, why? Why would you, why would you do that? 
For he built again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed, and he raised up altars for Baal, and made an Asherah as Ahab king of Israel did, and worshipped all the army of the sky and served them. He built altars in Yahweh's house, of which Yahweh said, I will put my name in Jerusalem. He built altars for all the army of the sky in the two courts of Yahweh's house. He made his son to pass through the fire, practiced sorcery, used enchantments, and dealt with those who had familiar spirits and with wizards. He did much evil in Yahweh's sight to provoke him to anger. He set the engraved image of Asherah that he had made in the house of which Yahweh said to David and to Solomon his son, in this house and in Jerusalem which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. I will not cause the feet of Israel to wander any more out of the land which I gave their fathers if only they will observe to do according to all that I have commanded them and according to all the law that my servant Moses commanded them. But they didn't listen. And Manasseh seduced them to do that which was evil more than the nations did whom Yahweh destroyed before the children of Israel. They're doing the same, but worse, right? Verse 10, Yahweh spoke by his servants, the prophet, saying, Because Manasseh, king of Judah, has done these abominations and has done wickedly above all that the Amorites did who were before him and has also made Judah to sin with his idols. Therefore, Yahweh, the God of Israel, says, Behold, I bring such evil on Jerusalem and Judah that whoever hears of it, both his ears will tingle. I think that's the I think that's Babylon coming. I will stretch out over Jerusalem the line of Samaria and the plummet of Ahab's house, and I will wipe Jerusalem as a man wipes a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. I will cast off the remnant of my inheritance and deliver them into the hands of their enemies. They will become a prey and a plunder to all their enemies, because they have done that which is evil in my sight, and have provoked me to anger since the day their fathers came out of Egypt, even to this day. Moreover, Manasseh shed innocent blood very much until he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another, in addition to his sin with which he made Judah to sin, in doing that which was evil in Yahweh's sight. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and all that he did and his sin that he sinned, aren't they written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? Manasseh slept with his fathers and was buried in the garden of his own house in the garden of Uzzah and Amon his son reigned in his place. Well, maybe I should stop there and go read the Manasseh account in Second Chronicles. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to stop there and then I'm going to come back and finish Amon. All right, so we're in Second Chronicles 33, that tray tray, get you some. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 55 years in Jerusalem. He did that which was evil in Yahweh's sight after the abominations of the nations whom Yahweh cast out before the children of Israel. I like the abominations of the nations. Like it sounds like a band. Anyways, verse three. For he built again the high places which Hezekiah his father had broken down, and he raised up altars for the Baals and made Asheroth, and worshipped all the army of the sky and served them. He built altars in Yahweh's house, of which Yahweh said, My name shall be in Jerusalem forever. He built altars for all the army of the sky and the two courts of Yahweh's house. He also made his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. He practiced sorcery, divination, and witchcraft, and dealt with those who had familiar spirits and with wizards. He did much evil in Yahweh's sight to provoke him to anger. He set the engraved image of the idol which he made in God's house, of which God said to David and to Solomon his son, in this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. I will not any more remove the foot of Israel from off the land which I have appointed for your fathers, if only they will observe to do all that I have commanded them, even all the law, the statutes, and the ordinances given by Moses. Manasseh seduced Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem so that they did more evil than did the nations whom Yahweh destroyed before the children of Israel. Yahweh spoke to Manasseh and to his people, but they didn't listen. Therefore Yahweh brought on them the captains of the army of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh in chains, bound him with fetters, and carried him to Babylon. When he was distressed, he begged Yahweh his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers. He prayed to him, and he was entreated by him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that Yahweh was God. Now after this, he built an outer wall to David's city on the west side of Gihon in the valley, even to the entrance at the fish gate. He encircled Ophel with it and raised it up to a very great height, and he put valiant captains in all the fortified cities of Judah. He took away the foreign gods and the idol out of Yahweh's house and all the altars that he had built in the mountain of Yahweh's house and in Jerusalem and cast them out of the city. 
He built up Yahweh's altar and offered sacrifices of peace offerings and of thanksgiving on it and commanded Judah to serve Yahweh, the God of Israel. Nevertheless, the people sacrificed still in the high places, but only to Yahweh, their God. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh and his prayer to his God and the words of the seers who spoke to him in the name of Yahweh, the God of Israel, behold, they are written among the acts of the kings of Israel. His prayer also and how God was entreated of him and all his sin and his trespass and the places in which he built high places places and set up the Asherah poles and the engraved images before he humbled himself. Behold, they are written in the history of Hosai. So Manasseh slept with his fathers and they buried him in his own house and Ammon, his son, reigned in his place. All right, we're going to read a little bit, read a little bit about Ammon here. Ammon was 22 years old when he began to reign and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Meshulameth, the daughter of Harus of Jotba. He did that which was evil in Yahweh's sight, as Manasseh his father did. He walked in all the ways that his father walked and served the idols that his father served and worshipped them. And he abandoned Yahweh, the God of his fathers, and didn't walk in the way of Yahweh. The servants of Ammon conspired against him and put the king to death in his own house. But the people of the land killed all those who had conspired against King Ammon, and the people of the land made Josiah his son king in his place. Now the rest of the acts of Ammon, which he did, aren't they written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? He was buried in his tomb in the garden of Uzzah, and Josiah, his son, reigned in his place. Back into Second Chronicles 33, verse 21. Ammon was 22 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned two years in Jerusalem. He did that which was evil in Yahweh's sight, as did Manasseh his father, and Ammon sacrificed to all the engraved images which Manasseh his father had made and served them. He didn't humble himself before Yahweh as Manasseh, his father, had humbled himself, but the same Ammon trespassed more and more. His servants conspired against him and put him to death in his own house. But the people of the land killed all those who had conspired against King Ammon, and the people of the land made Josiah his son king in his place. So then we're going to read the first two verses of Second Kings 22 here. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jedidah, Jedidah, Jedida. Sorry, okay, take two, take two, here we go. Somebody say action, <sighs> action. His mother's name was Jedida, the daughter of Adaiah of Boskath. He did that which was right in Yahweh's eyes and walked in all the way of David his father and didn't turn to the right hand or to the left. All right, Second Chronicles 34, 1 through 7. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. He did that which was right in Yahweh's eyes and walked in the ways of David his father and didn't turn away to the right hand or to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was yet young, he began to seek after the God of David his father. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem from the high places, the Asherah poles, the engraved images, and the molten images. They broke down the altars of the Baals in his presence, and he cut down the incense altars that were on high above them. He broke the Asherah poles, the engraved images, and the molten images in pieces, made dust of them, and scattered it on the graves of those who had sacrificed to them. He burned the bones of the priests on their altars and purged Judah and Jerusalem. He did this in the cities of Manasseh, Ephraim, and Simeon, even to Naphtali, around in their ruins. He broke down the altars and beat the Asherah poles and the engraved images into powder and cut down all the incense altars throughout all the land of Israel, then returned to Jerusalem. Lastly, Jeremiah 1 through 2, 22. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, one of the priests who were in Anathoth, Anathoth, yeah, Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin. Yahweh's word came to him in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, to the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, to the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Now Yahweh's word came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord Yahweh, behold, 
I don't know how to speak, for I am a child. But Yahweh said to me, don't say I am a child, for you must go to whomever I send you, and you must say whatever I command you. Don't be afraid because of them, for I am with you to rescue you, says Yahweh. Then Yahweh stretched out his hand and touched my mouth. Then Yahweh said to me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Behold, I have today set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Moreover, Yahweh's word came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then Yahweh said to me, you have seen well, for I watch over my word to perform it. Yahweh's word came to me the second time saying, what do you see? I said, I see a boiling cauldron and it is tipping away from the north. Then Yahweh said to me, out of the north, evil will break out on all the inhabitants, excuse me, of the land. For behold, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, says Yahweh. They will come. And they will each set his throne at the entrance of the gates of Jerusalem and against all its walls all around and against all the cities of Judah. I will utter my judgments against them concerning all their wickedness and that they have forsaken me and have burned incense to other gods and worshiped the works of their own hands. You therefore put your belt on your waist, arise and say to them all that I command you. Don't be dismayed at them, lest I dismay you before them. For behold, I have made you today a fortified city, an iron pillar and bronze walls against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against its princes, against its priests and against the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they will not prevail against you. For I am with you, says Yahweh, to rescue you. Yahweh's word came to me saying, go and proclaim in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Yahweh says, I remember you for the kindness of your youth, the love of your weddings, how you went after me in the wilderness in a land that was not sown. Israel was holiness to Yahweh, the first fruits of his increase. All who devour him will be held guilty. Evil will come on them, says Yahweh. Hear Yahweh's word, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Yahweh says, What unrighteousness have your fathers found in me? that they have gone far from me and have walked after worthless vanity and have become worthless. They didn't say, where is Yahweh who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, who led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of shadow of death, through a land that no one passed through and where no man lived. I brought you into a plentiful land to eat its fruit and its goodness. But when you entered, you defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. The priests didn't say, where is Yahweh? And those who handle the law didn't know me. The rulers also transgressed against me and the prophets prophesied by Baal and followed things that do no profit. Therefore, I will yet contend with you, says Yahweh, and I will contend with your children's children. For pass over to the islands of Kittim and see, send to Kedar, and consider diligently to see if there has been such a thing. Has a nation changed its gods, which really are no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doesn't profit. Be astonished, you heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be very desolate, says Yahweh, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the spring of living waters, and cut out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns that can't hold water. Is Israel a slave? Is he born into slavery? Why has he become a captive? The young lions have roared at him and yelled. They have made his land waste. His cities are burned up without inhabitant. The children also of Memphis and Tapanis have broken the crown of your head. Haven't you brought this on yourself? and that you have forsaken Yahweh your God when he led you by the way? Now what do you gain by going to Egypt to drink the waters of the Shehor? That's the word, not like Shehor, like like prostitute or whatever, but S-H-I-H-O-R. Sorry, I didn't realize it was going to sound like that until I said it. And then I was like, ooh, that might need some clarification there. The waters of the Shehor. I think that's the name of the river. Or why do you go on the way to Assyria to drink the waters of the river. Your own wickedness will correct you and your backsliding will rebuke you. Know therefore and see that it is an evil and bitter thing that you have forsaken Yahweh your God and that my fear is not in you, says the Lord, Yahweh of armies. For long ago, I broke off your yoke and burst your bonds. You said, I will not serve. For on every high hill and under every green tree you bowed yourself, playing the prostitute. Yet I had planted you a noble vine, a pure and faithful seed. How then have you turned into the degenerate branches of a foreign vine to me? For though you wash yourself with lye and use much soap, yet your iniquity is marked before me, 
says the Lord Yahweh. That concludes our reading for the day. We've got missionaries to pray for. Jeff and Jane Peltz. More, they, this is what they want. More laborers as well as those serving to be effective in outreach and discipleship. Jane to continue to thrive in her role as coordinator of InterVarsity Link staff and that the gospel is advanced. Jane's global consulting with International Student Ministry and the International Fellowship of Evangelical Students and the additional funding needed. The outreach at College of DuPage, where Jeff is the staff worker with InterVarsity. The summer Bible study to be a place of gathering around God's word, which draws newcomers and deepens all involved. The international students arriving this month to feel welcomed and that they would be open to the gospel and Jesus to draw their adult children in New Zealand to himself. And I mean, I, I think that's, that's pretty much what we, what we all want, right? We want the word of God to go forth. We want God to be glorified. We want his blessings upon our labors and the things that we do. We want opportunities for the gospel, especially if we're working in some sort of ministry and we want his blessings upon that. We want, we want to be faithful. We want to be holy. We want to be set apart. We want to glorify God. So let's pray. Let's pray to that end. Father, thank you so much for your kindness and mercies in sharing your word with us. We we wouldn't know what to do had, had you not really told us, explained it to us, and given us uh, the history of your people and how we have failed mankind from the beginning, from the first Adam. From the first Adam until the last Adam, there was, was nothing but failure on this coming to you. But there's great news, great news that a Savior has come. The Messiah, the seed of the woman, has conquered the seed of the serpent and procured a way back to you. That way we want to proclaim. That way we pray for your blessings upon as Jeff and Jane uh, seek to develop leaders, laborers, and work in outreach and discipleship. Give them strength and grace as they seek to create co-laborers and disciple more people in that time and energy and investment that that takes, especially with international students showing up and trying to invest in them and some of the challenges that come from different cultures and different languages. Pray for your blessings upon them. And then also the ministries that they work with there in InterVarsity. And all the things that they've got going on over the summer and their preparations and their work, their labors, we just pray that you would please bless those. And then also um, the staff that they work with and um, the consulting, the funding, all the things, the kind of the, the nitty gritty, the daily things that they need. Pray that you would please provide them for Jeff and Jane. And that you would bless their labors and that you would bless inner varsity and the work that they're trying to do. Have mercy also on us that we would um, be faithful to preach the gospel, be faithful to live the gospel, be faithful to um, when opportunity arises that we would be those who would share the good news the good news of Jesus Christ, that we would not keep silent, that when the, the spirit burns within us, that we would use our mouth to proclaim the truth and that we would glorify you and that we would proclaim your kindness and your mercy to the ends of the earth. And we think of Jeff and Jane's adult children uh, in New Zealand, that you would please have mercy on them and draw them unto yourself in a saving way. And we think about our children uh, adult and otherwise, that you would have mercy on them, that you would please also draw them unto yourself in a saving way. Would you please not let our own hypocrisy and our own sins and our own unfaithfulness be a stumbling block to our kids? Give us hearts that are quick to repent. Give us hearts that are humble. Give us hearts that are, are quick to acknowledge our faults and acknowledge our sins and say, hey, I'm not the standard, but pointing them and others to Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Thank you for listening. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any uh, prayer requests or anything like that, hit me up. Um, notmanynoble at gmail.com. Show notes are at notmanynoble.com. And I will catch y'all tomorrow. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.